the song. Good. All right. Well, thank you. That was a fantastic panel. So whoever pulled together these folks, I'm really impressed. And so I want to invite up um, Jason Marshall and Eric Jackson. Um, and it's a wonderful tie-in from the previous panel. Um, so they're going to be presenting on one of the Code for North Carolina projects. And one of the threads you'll see continuing for the panel is that need for collaboration, the need to kind of learn um, from what other people are doing and pull those together. So with no further ado, I'll hand this over to Thank you very much. Jason know that we have no clicker, so they've just got to do the beep noise. Did anyone have the beep um, books when they were little? Long way. Um, and so one of the things I'm really excited about listening to this one is it's about a reentry program, about sharing resources as people get out of prison and um, and enter back into society. We're still like waiting for slides, right? You guys pull me off when it's not. So um, about 15 years ago, I used to volunteer with an organization um, to the inner cities of Durham. And I read with this kid, his name was Anthony, he was a sweet kid, he was in third grade, really struggled with reading, struggled with everything. And one time I went over to read with him and he ran to me with the most exciting news you could ever imagine. It was so thrilling. And he had this big news about his father. And I would swear from the look on his face, the smile on his face, his father had won the Nobel Peace Prize or had been drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. What Anthony was telling me is that his father was returning home from prison the next day. And it made me realize that we put people away, but they are fathers and their sons, and they're a valuable member of our society. And it really changed my life back then. So with that, I will finally turn this over to Eric and Jason. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'm Eric Jackson from Code for Actual. And I'm Jason Marshall from Code for Greensboro. And we just want to share a little bit with you today about the North Carolina Reentry Resources Hub project that we're collaborating on. And you guys advance the next slide. Uh, first, we want to just define the problem and, and, and watch it here. You can see here by some of these numbers on the screen that this is a, a very real uh, issue in our communities with the sheer number of individuals that have previously been incarcerated and being released into our communities. And also the recidivism rate is, is typically very high. So this started in a... So Chris, we're, uh, we're basically going back and forth from here, so let me okay. do that. You can go ahead and advance to the next slide. All right, so this started in Asheville, and the important thing to know about how it got started is that Coach Rashville decided to stop trying to get people to come to our meetings, and we started going to other groups' meetings. We went out to the people who were already dealing with the problems, who had a lot of great ideas about the kinds of solutions they might use. And one of the first people we ran into was a woman named Christiana Tugman, who was our local uh, resource, uh, reentry resources information hub. Her cell phone was basically what you called in order to get good information, because there's a ton of bad information out there. And a lot of people trying to exploit these people. Um, so what we decided was we needed to replace Christiana with a website. And we did the quickest, dirtiest thing we could do. We spun up a WordPress site took all the information she had collected over the years, organized it, got it on the site, vetted it through some local uh, community resources, launched it, and we were kind of amazed at what happened at the amount of response we got. The places where it started getting used, not only in prisons, but the DA's office as a flyer um, that they distribute to the folks. And immediately started hearing from other communities that they wanted something like this. And so a little bit about how Greensboro and Nashville came together. I met Eric at the uh, NC Captain Summit in Greensboro uh, in August of last year. And we discussed a little bit uh, about uh, what our East Barber Days were doing at that time, although we didn't explicitly discuss the Reentry Project. But the following month, actually, here at City Camp last year, Eric brought the project to hack on during the Saturday Hack Day. 
And then a discussion ensued. Uh, I approached Eric and originally had discussed with him about the idea of calling the project and, and deploying it in Guilford County where we live. But as the, the discussions developed, it quickly turned to, well, how could we take advantage of uh, additional potential impact here? Uh, they had already stepped through the process of collecting the state and the federal level information on resources uh, that would apply to all 100 counties in North Carolina. And so that eventually led us to, to fly this project under the Code for NC uh, banner. So the key question here was, do we do the traditional thing of you clone my project and, and you know, do your own copy? Uh, or do we try and do some sort of joint solution? And the problem is that there's a lot of this information, it changes um, relatively frequently, and the state and federal information needs to be distributed to everything. So if you've got two copies, yeah, you can do that, three maybe. After that, it becomes really hard to coordinate disseminating the common information uh, to all the copies. So we should do a joint solution. And what we decided was to go all the way to the other end of the spectrum, and we decided that we wanted to launch on day one, serving all 100 North Carolina counties. And the way we do that is we have some shared information, but each topic page is generated automatically based on the county um, and the topic. We pull in the common information. At minimum, even if there's no local effort, we, we pull uh, filtered data from the North Carolina 211 database and provide the local resources for that county or region. And then if you have a local group who's coordinating and curating uh, higher quality information, then we'll prioritize that on the show. And then came the hardest problem. Um, so, uh, you know, with the work that Eric did with Christiana in Baltimore County, uh, Eric, I feel like he was very fortunate that he was able to early on identify that person in, in Baltimore County. Uh, but what we're seeing is really the hardest problem is managing the content. The content has to stay managed, curated, and current uh, for the, the project and the resource to, to be valuable for, for these communities. And there are a lot of stakeholders at play that you can see here. And what we're, what we're finding is that uh, brigade volunteers are not a good vehicle to maintain a project. Uh, we've got the tech piece under control. We can build a website. But really for this to be successful, the communities must organize around it and the community stakeholders need to rally around this project for it to be successful. Really glad to hear that we've got the tech piece under control. We don't want to do that <laughs> um, but what we did was we divided the, the problem into two parts. The brigades are good at coding. They're good at kind of creating new solutions, maintaining them if it's not too hard, uh, as long as you've got you know, some reasonable way to hand off. Uh, they are terrible for trying to coordinate between lots of different stakeholders in the community. Um, doing that hard, we're going to update this, we're going to vet all the information, do annual reviews. Volunteers don't do that sort of thing. And for that, we do we work with external partners. Um, at the statewide level, uh, a nonprofit that I founded a few years ago, Democracy Apps, manages kind of the coordination of the different local groups and overall infrastructure, and then local partners uh, are responsible for vetting local resources, getting this stuff on there, reviewing it regularly. And then we have some informal other partners like uh, United Way has been great at kind of aligning 2-1-1 data. Um, so we're listed as a resource on them and they come back to us, as well as uh, UNC School of Government has a great tool we're looking at collateral consequences of criminal convictions, and we're working with them to, to use that information on our site. And so where are we now? Uh, we have a working prototype for the public site that we're looking to deploy in, uh, or later this year, and we're also uh, moving forward with an admin interface that will allow uh, local uh, stakeholders and counties to update their content. And then with the content itself, we're actively working to transfer and verify the existing data that's on the bunking site currently. And we're stepping through exercises to coalesce and, and uh, create that data also in Guilford County currently. And of note here, we've, we've already had some interest from uh, Durham. We've talked with Aaron Parrish uh, it, with Durham, and uh, we've talked with Chris Matthews a bit in Wake County. Uh, so part of this clearly is a call to action uh, to uh, come and engage with the project. 
Good to point out as well as interest, um, most recently from uh, New Orleans, uh, but also Boise, Idaho. Um, so why are we talking about this here? And, and there's the obvious reason is, you know, we're a couple of brigades, we did something cool, we want to tell you about it. Also, we're uh, completely overwhelmed and desperate, so we want your help. Um, and we also, because this is such an important problem, we want you to kind of consider bringing your community onto the platform and getting, you know, we'll, we'll connect you up with, uh, try and help you connect up with local resources to do that. But the other reason we want to talk about it here is this is one example of a way that a collaboration between a couple of brigades is able to amplify something that one did. Um, it has been fun to kind of build that sense of shared mission. And I think most importantly for, for us is the idea that we could start taking this out beyond the places that currently have brigades to the places that are never going to have brigades. Um, and so we wanted to, to kick off that conversation that seemed like the most obvious place to do it. And so Eric and I have been discussing this concept of this distributed and remote brigade collaboration and the idea that by taking advantage of the, the fact that uh, Buncombe County had collected those federal and state level resources, there was an opportunity to provide value beyond the city of Greensboro, Guilford County, Buncombe County, the city of Asheville. So uh, we're truly uh, trying to approach this from a perspective of we're coding for all of North Carolina to provide that value. And then what that looks like on the ground, uh, Eric and I are holding uh, weekly remote stand-ups that uh, we'd like to invite you guys to participate if you'd like to engage with the project. Um, we're, uh, we've held uh, multi-community hack days where Asheville and Greensboro connected remotely to hack on the project. And uh, early on, it was, we, we decided that it was, it was very important for us to put in a well-defined open source project management framework. Uh, so we can stay organized and make sure that the contributions that we're getting from our communities are in line with our goals for the project. And so we leave the impression that we are we have got this really organized, and uh, of course it's not perfect. But um, so this talk is intended to be an, a, a three-part invitation. First, if your community is not actual at Greensboro, and, and you'd like to. Uh, See about getting additional resources on the platform, please talk to either one of us. Uh, one of us is here, right? you know, we're both here today and I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, the second is uh, I'll be here working on the project tomorrow. If you stop by, I'm sure I can find you something to do. And then the third is to continue this conversation about how we, we start to work for the entire state. Um, I'm gonna be pitching an unconference section on Code for North Carolina. Vote for the session and come join the conversation. And uh, you can also, uh, if you, yeah, uh, both of our Twitter handles up there. And if you want to participate, that's a link to kind of the, the central repo on GitHub.